Hey everyone and welcome back. So in my last video, I provided an analysis and breakdown of the rock and roll chic aesthetic. So in today's video, I'm going to show how you can incorporate this particular aesthetic into a classics wardrobe. Okay, so let's dive straight in. Now, I feel like this aesthetic always gets viewed as opposite or unfitting for the classic, and that's because somewhere along the way, it got assigned to the flamboyant gamine. And classics are also perceived as having this prim and proper persona. So what I wanna do today is show you how to actually incorporate this rock and roll chic aesthetic into a classics wardrobe while still honoring the natural even yin yang balance that a classic has. Now, if you haven't watched my rock and roll chic aesthetic video yet, I would definitely take a moment to go check that out just to familiarize yourself with some of the points that I'm going to be speaking on. So with that said, let's get straight into it. So in general, classics are suggested to keep details simple, clean, minimal, and elegant, and to maintain a smooth, symmetrical line and shape. So what if you're a classic that's really drawn to the rock and roll chic aesthetic and it really coincides with your personal interests and lifestyle? It really just speaks to your authenticity. Now, although a classic will generally have an essence that conveys a natural sophistication or kind of a controlled and graceful nature does not mean that they have to dress like a member of the local country club. How off or weird would you feel if you dressed like this, but a big part of your lifestyle is attending rock shows or even just hanging around alternative environments, for instance? Well, what I really want to drive home here is that personal style elements should absolutely be relevant to the individual. So let's take a look at how classics can incorporate this aesthetic into their wardrobe without fighting against their natural lines and shapes and while still honoring their naturally refined essence. Oh, and I just want to mention real quick, all of this is my personal opinion. So if there's something in here that I suggest to avoid and you really want to wear it, that is 100% up to you. I'm just coming from the perspective of what's going to be most harmonious. And of course, because we're so individual, any sort of specific recommendations would be evaluated on a person by person basis. So we see that this aesthetic is definitely yang dominant with the bold impression that it leaves to onlookers. However, there are some flares of yin that come in through pops of glam and then even some unconstructed airiness. Well, for the classic, we definitely want to lean into more of the glam or chic side of it and turn down the volume just a little bit on some of the unrefined elements. So we can still have that striking yang impression without overpowering the inherent even balance that's so hallmark of classics. Okay, let's move on to color palette. So black monochromatic is going to serve as a great base and then bright white and primary colors that blend well together are going to really help you maintain that smooth silhouette. So metallics are a great way to add in that extra edge while still remaining pretty refined. Now washed out colors and acid wash should be avoided or used very minimally as it can really clash with your natural opulence. Okay, so next up is materials. Now the name of the game with materials isn't so much the materials themselves, but just how they lend themselves to structure. And in general, when we're talking about classics, we do want to stick with more luxury materials and avoid the cheap kind of materials. Now, denim and cotton are great for everyday and casual looks, but as a classic, you are able to pull in more luxury materials in daytime looks as well. Heavier materials can include leather and velvet, and velvet is great because velvet garments are usually made with structure in mind and are generally well cut. Now, the same can be said about leather. Leather really lends itself to being well tailored, but I will say to use both of these materials um, in moderation and make sure that they're always high quality. Now, metals should be used in moderation and kept sleek, simple, and proportionate. Okay, next up we have patterns. So exotic animal prints like leopard and snake are definitely a great way to add interest. Now, bold graphics should be kept fairly clean, proportionate, symmetrical, and not overused. Now, plaid is great because of its inherent symmetry, but just be sure to keep things a little more tailored. 
Okay, next up is details and accessories. Now this is where we really need to reel things in a little bit and make sure that we're not over accessorizing. Keep jewelry to one to two pieces and definitely be conscious of proportion. Studs, zippers, and chains can look great just as long as they're not used in excess. And adding pops of primary colors to monochromatic looks is a great way to add interest. Think twice before introducing fringe and straps and also avoid excess distressing. Small distressing is okay for daytime looks, but too much distressing is really gonna start to bring you down. Okay, next up is construction. So construction is key when adapting this aesthetic to a classics wardrobe. You generally wanna maintain your smooth silhouette. And your version of playing with the contrast between clingy and loose is going to be a loose fitting t-shirt that's tucked into a pair of jeans that fit impeccably or a pair of trousers. So a quality blazer and leather jacket are gonna be staples because they really do offer the structure that's complementary for a classics silhouette. Now avoid excess layering, sloppy or relaxed construction, and really stick with clean necklines. Okay, let's move on to hair. So sleek styles are gonna look amazing. And in general, you do wanna keep hair pretty well kempt. Now effortless hair can work, but just avoid overly tousled or asymmetric styles. And of course, be conscious of symmetry as your hair is what frames your face. And we all know that classics just have this beautiful inherent symmetry about them. Okay, now let's move on to makeup. Now, depending on your head to toe look, your makeup would likely be a bold or semi-bold lip, um, clean complexion, and a defined eye. So a clean proportionate wing is gonna be your version of a smoky eye. And I would avoid super glam makeup because it can really start to take away from the beauty of your natural symmetry. Okay, let's move on to shoes. Now, an interesting shoe that offers elements of the aesthetic would definitely be used as an accessory in the head to toe ensemble. Booties and heels with a moderate height are definitely gonna help highlight your chic essence. Now, combat boots can be worn. Just be sure that they're kept proportionate that they offer clean lines and structure. And street shoes should be kept clean and sleek. Okay, so now that we've taken a look at the outline of rock and roll chic for classics, let's take a look at three different looks. And by the way, I'm gonna be looking down a little bit because I do have the picture pulled up on my computer monitor and I wanna be able to clearly give my commentary on it. Okay, so we have our first example. This is gonna be an everyday casual look. Um, to me, this really encompasses casual, everyday rock and roll chic for the classic. Um, the balance of all the elements here is so beautiful. First, we have the monochromatic base combined with the cut top. So notice how the sleeves maintain structure and aren't sloppy. And then the bottoms, they really help maintain that smooth silhouette. So we're not disrupting that smooth silhouette at all. We also see the use of this bold yet clean and fairly simplistic graphic on the tee. Accessories are kept to a minimum. So there's one bracelet on each wrist and an element here that I consider to be so hallmark of classics and that's the handkerchief around the neck except this is more of a bandana that she's put around her neck which uh, this garment a bandana we typically see in rock and roll subcultures such as punk and rockabilly so it totally ties in to this rock and roll chic aesthetic okay remember how i said shoes can be used as an accessory this is a perfect example of that so we have the edgy little stud embellishments here but they still remain pretty chic and symmetrical in the overall design, and it really complements the rest of the head to toe look. Now, let's say you're going to the grocery store, you don't really wanna throw on a pair of shoes like this. These can definitely be swapped out for some clean animal print um, sneakers like the ones that I had shown before. Now, if we look at the overall use of accessory elements in this head to toe look, they're used sparingly and with intention. Okay, let's move on to the next look, which is still a daytime look, but it can be worn into the evening. And keep in mind that classics can naturally pull off more of a dressy or polished look for the daytime. Okay, next up here, we have example number two, which again offers great balance. The blazer really offers structure, but isn't overly formal. There's zero use of jewelry, by the way, in this look because the outfit doesn't really call for it. Maybe a ring or earrings, but nothing more than that. Now, an element that I 
love in this head to toe look is going to be that pointed toe patent leather mule that she's wearing. These shoes add such a sleek yang um, interest to the outfit. I just absolutely love it. Now the white t-shirt fits very well. It offers a little bit of graphic interest, but it's kept very proportional. Now a busy graphic tee in this case, in my opinion, would totally clash with that kind of noble vibe that the velvet brings through. It can really start to throw off the entire head to toe balance that we have right here. So this, in my opinion, is just perfect. Now you'll see we have just a hint of distressing in the jean here. So just a hint, which really brings in that kind of rough and tumble, rock and roll chic element that we're looking for. Now, one element that I would bring in here that I would just love to see, and I think it would really complete the head to toe look, would be a beautiful leather studded clutch, like an envelope clutch. Um, I just think that this would really pull together and finalize that rock and roll chic for a classic in this total ensemble. Uh, so the makeup here is going to be a semi-bold lip with just a defined eye. Um, I don't think that a cat eye would really add any balance to the look, just a good defined eye. Okay, and last here we have example number three, and I bet you guys didn't think that I was gonna include a leather jacket, but like I said earlier, leather jacket has got to be a staple in a classics wardrobe for this particular aesthetic. Okay, so this is gonna be more of an evening look. I wouldn't call it formal by all means, but just more of an evening type look. Now, I really love the balance here, and honestly, I wanted to do a riff off of this image that I found because I just, I was so taken aback by this particular image. I thought that it was so rock and roll chic. It's so fun and it's so not the epitome of classics, right? So opposite. It's asymmetrical. It's busy. It's in your face. I'm like, how do we embody this, take it as inspiration and put this into a classics wardrobe? And this to me is a representation of that. So in this look, we are keeping an ideal silhouette intact and we're creating a good flow while maintaining the edge factor. So the use of these stripes here in the skirt really bring through that yang. They're elongated, they're sharp. And then we also have nice, sharp, elongated details with the use of the stiletto heel with the pointed toe. Really great. And then of course, um, with the leather jacket, we I do believe that we have a very striking yang impression here, but we're bringing in that element of elegance with the flow of the skirt. And we're just really honoring the silhouette here. Now we also see how pearl earrings were opted for in this look, which I think was a great choice. We have a lot of yang going on here. We have a lot of edge aside from the flow, the construction of the skirt. So having those pearl earrings is really going to balance things out. I think that it was a beautiful choice. Now the hair here is sleek. It's kind of pulled back. We have a little bit of a tousled element with the um, part of the bang that's pulled out, which is great. And then the bun isn't so tight that it's a ballerina bun. We have a little bit of wispiness going on there. And then I really love the chain detail with the purse and then the sleek classic shape of it. Like I said, to me, this is just a great, well-balanced overall classic rock and roll chic look. Okay, so I hope this gives you a better understanding of how to adapt the rock and roll chic aesthetic into a classics wardrobe in a complimentary kind of way. And I really hope this helped illuminate that although the rock and roll chic aesthetic is seemingly fitting for particular archetypes, this in no way means that it's not something that you can't start to incorporate into your own wardrobe. Now, if you like this video or generally like content like this, I would really appreciate if you gave this video a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. And as always, if you have any questions or want to start a discussion, I would love to meet you in the comment section down below. But that's it for today, and I will see you guys at the next video. Bye!